Well, I guess you just have to be prepared to die. Well, what? Pay attention. Get off your cell phones. Pay attention. Welcome back, welcome back. Another episode of Mindful Mayhem. I'm your host, Cody Tucker. As always, be sure to like and subscribe. So, the old nature boy got himself into some deep shit. (laughs) Dude, this shit is so fucking stupid. So, if you haven't been, uh, you know, paying attention to to what was going on, uh, Vice does this... um, this series called Dark Side of the Ring. And yeah, I mean, they just talk about how fucked most wrestlers are. Like, um, and they did one on Ric Flair and this like plane ride that Ric Flair was on with, um, some other wrestlers like back in the day. I think it was like in the early 2000s. And the apparent, uh, so allegedly Ric Flair got fucked up not that hard to believe and uh sexually assaulted two of the flight attendants <laughs> and okay so i or, i mean nothing really funny about that i guess um but what was funny when i was like kind of reading about it was that <laughs> This motherfucker took off all of his... So, allegedly, on the flight, he took off all of his clothes, which he admitted to this, so I I tend to believe, you know, this shit. So, he took off all of his clothes, put on his, like, big-ass nature boy robe, and then (laughs) was walking up and down the aisles, (laughs) helicopter-dicking. Which, look, I mean, you can't be mad at that. That's fucking Ric Flair. Like, if Ric Flair was... Look, I mean, I'm not gay. I mean, I don't think... Uh, you know, I mean, I guess if it was offered in the right way, anyways, we'll not, we won't go down that path. Um, you know, like if, if Ric Flair was, you know, walking around naked in my, like, you know, on my flight, I wouldn't be that upset about it. The problem was <laughs> that Ric Flair allegedly also, uh, went up to, you know, the two flight attendants and basically like pulled his shit out and was making, was trying to like force them into, you know, doing something with it. Um, that part, <laughs> it, you know, maybe, you know, I don't want to fucking, I don't believe in, you know, I'm not one to, uh, to victim blame. <laughs> I mean, you know, I've I've most likely been a victim. You know, there's like I'm I'm probably sixty percent sure that I was molested as a kid. Um maybe like fifty five percent sure. Look, I was in Boy Scouts one week and then the next week I wasn't. And I have yet to really have it has yet to been explained to me why we stopped going. So you know, the only conclusion I can draw is that I was, you know, diddled. But I did learn how to tie a couple knots, so I say even trade. <laughs> and they let me shoot fucking bow and arrows. Like, shit, I'll I'll let somebody jerk me off if they'll let me, you know, shoot some bow and arrows or something. Take me camping. Anyways. Um so I I have look. And maybe, maybe Ric Flair did, you know, assault these women. There are worse things that could happen to you than having the fucking nature boy say, hey, hey would you want to touch this dick? Woo! Like, I mean, it's probably a, it's probably a pretty handsome little piece on him. I mean, his pubes probably are, you know, 
bright, bright blonde, feathered, pressed pubes. Stick's probably a little uh, reddish. Um, you know, could be worse. I mean, fuck, look, again, I'm not gay, as far as I know. But if I was on a flight, and I look over and I just see, you know, a big old bright set of blonde pubes and Ric Flair's piece hanging on my shoulder like a fucking, like a parrot. I'm not going to be that fucking mad. It could be way worse. It could be fucking Mick Foley doing that shit to you. Yeah, I can can get these fuckers, you know, making a documentary about that shit. Having Mick Foley's fucking greasy, crusty dick hanging on you. (laughs) I mean, or it could be fucking Hulk Hogan. From everything I've heard, he has a small piece. And that's, you know, he's a huge dick with a small penis. (laughs) Yeah. He's also uh, not a fan of black people. So, you know. Well, it's not that Hulk Hogan's not a fan of black people. He just doesn't want his daughter dating black people. (laughs) Yeah, well. You know what's funny is that, like, that whole thing was, like, you know, Hulk Hogan saying that, like, oh, I don't want my daughter dating. uh... Well, he used a a racial slur that I don't think people have used in 90 years. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to use it because I don't really know exactly how offensive it is. I assume it's pretty offensive because people were pretty pissed off. But it's such an old racial slur that, like, I don't even know if most people would even know that it's a racial slur. They just knew it in context. It's, uh, yeah, I don't want to say it. So, anyway, you can look it up and find out. Um, But... You know, he was saying like, oh, I don't want my daughter dating a mm, and then use that slur. Well, the mm, that he was talking about was fucking Jamie Foxx. Like, look, OK, I've I've grown up with some racist human beings, uh, mostly relatives, <laughs> mostly from one side of my family. Um, I've heard all kinds of shit. But I guarantee you, not a single person in my family would be upset if one of their daughters was dating Jamie Foxx. Now, at first, they'd be like, whoa, 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 whoa. who the fuck, what's fucking going on? He's like, oh, don't worry, he's got an Oscar. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, it's fucking Jamie Foxx. He has a goddamn Academy Award. I think he has Grammys. Like, the dude's doing all right. He's not fucking, you know, Daquan that just got fucking, that just got let out. Like, it's goddamn Jamie Foxx. And Hulk Hogan is that hell-bent on making sure that his daughter doesn't date a black dude. That he doesn't even want her dating Jamie Foxx? God damn. Jamie Foxx is probably, is like, I mean, that's, you know, grade A black dude. I mean, Obama would be the only better option. It goes Obama, Jamie Foxx, Will Smith. Uh, maybe not Denzel Washington. He's kind of old now. Hold on. Obama, Jamie Foxx, Will Smith, King Griffey Jr. <laughs> Those are the like black dudes that white guys would be fine with their daughters dating. I mean, Nelly might be somewhere up there, especially if it's my dad. <laughs> uh, yeah, like, anyway, so Ric Flair, you know, innocent until proven guilty, but God damn, man, it doesn't look too good. They've already stopped selling his merch, which is why I'm glad I got a hold of this bad boy before that happened. <laughs> I mean, look, Ric Flair is, I, I don't doubt that Ric Flair has done some fucked up stuff in his day. And he's admitted to that shit. Like, if you watch this 30 for 30, I mean, he wasn't exactly like, you know, keeping that shit under wraps. I just don't think he, I don't know. I shouldn't victim blame. But at the same time, I think they're fucking lying. <laughs> oh, man. But who knows? Like I said, I was fucking most likely diddled, so what am I going to say? But then again, my memory's all fucked anyway, so. I mean, I look, I, so what had been explained to me 
was that I was in Boy Scouts. I don't even know why I'm saying all this. Anyway, so what what has been explained to me was that I was in Boy Scouts. And that the scout, <laughs> this, this shit's so fucking bad. So that I was in Boy Scouts and the scout master, scout leader, whatever the fuck you call them. Um, we were all like playing a game or something like that. Um, and he basically made like a fat joke so that I look like a hippo. That's what my parents told me happened. So that means either one of two things happened. Either... That is really what happened, that the scout dude called me a hippo, which I'll say, I don't know, that's pretty funny. Like, I wouldn't be that upset. Um, I don't remember him saying any of that, but I wouldn't have been that upset. So, either he called me a hippo, or I was molested, and my parents wanted to hide that from me, but they still needed to make up an excuse as to why we left. So, whenever I was inquiring hey why didn't i ever like stay with boy scouts they just made something up on the spot and what they made up was that uh he said you are fat like a fucking hippo <laughs> which in that case means that my parents think i'm fat like a fucking hippo which um you know it's their fucking fault anyways i mean if they weren't feeding me goddamn pizza and ice cream all the time then and fucking hamburger helper i'd probably be all right but so neither one of those options are really that great. I mean, because option B, I was molested and my parents think I'm fat. So, but that does kind of seem to be more likely. <laughs> God damn. Oh, speaking of. um, So I don't know. I probably shouldn't even be saying this like publicly. But, I mean, publicly, it's fucking, yeah, all 20 of you are going <laughs> to gonna now know this. Um, so, uh, I have a terrible fear of um, an animal, a particular animal, the fucking grasshopper. If anybody, I mean, anybody that knows me knows that I'm, like, it's a legitimate, like, petrifying fear of grasshoppers i don't know why i've thought about it a thousand times like where the fuck does this come from like why am i afraid of grasshoppers um was i you know assaulted by one as a kid uh, i don't really remember i don't i can't i can only remember being afraid of grasshoppers i can remember my neighbor and my brother like chasing me with grasshoppers and being afraid, but I must have already been afraid, or else, you know, why pick that one bug to chase me with? When there's, you know, a million other ones, but the one that fucked with me was grasshoppers. So I, it must have already been known that I was afraid of grasshoppers. So there's that. Um. So the other night I go, <laughs> fuck. So the other night I go outside to smoke a cigarette, and I'm like walking down like to the edge of like the porch or whatever, finish my cigarette. And I turn back around to go back inside. And there's the fucking biggest grasshopper I've ever seen in my goddamn life on the, like the door handle, like uh, an inch from the door handle. I was like, ah, oh, fuck. And it was like, I don't know. I can't remember what time it was probably like 10 o'clock or something like that. And I was like, ready to try to go to sleep. So I thought, all right, um, I'm just going to go out into my truck and go to, and sleep in my truck. <laughs> I'm telling you, this fear is like legitimate. I used to like, I mean, there were times where I've called into work. Like whenever, yeah, like an old job, like I called into work one time because there was a grasshopper on my like trucks, like door handle. Like I'm, I mean, it's a legitimate fucking fear. And I, uh, <laughs> so I go, I walk over the porch, see this fucker and I'm like, ah, oh, God damn it. So then I go look and I'm like, all right, I guess I'll just sleep in my truck. Don't have my keys. So I'm like, oh, shit. Um, I like left everything inside because I was like just coming outside for five minutes to smoke a cigarette. So then I'm seeing this grass. I'm thinking, all right, how do I, how do I fucking get rid of it? Like, do I, like, what do I do? So I start grabbing like little, like, 
I don't know, these are like wood chip like things and start throwing them at the door. Just shoom, shoom, shoom. And I'm missing widely. Like, whew, whew, whew. and this fucker's not even doing anything. It just every once in a while, he'll kind of go, Ugh. God damn, with his like backwards fucking knees. Shit. Um, so, yeah, so I'm striking out big time on that. Then I take my socks off and I throw my socks at it and I hit pretty damn close to it. It still doesn't do anything. It's like, oh, this fucker's going to be here for the long run. Um, so then I go out and I just walk around the yard for like 30 minutes. And then every once like every couple minutes, I'm like walking back and looking, walking back, looking. And I see it's like barely even moving. Like this fucker's like just going up like inches at a time, like up towards this like little light. I'm like, oh, fuck, man, this thing is going to be here forever. Like, I'm just going to have to walk around all night, like in the yard. Um, so I then am like, all right, let me go back and look. And this has been like 30 to 40 minutes. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to go look at it and see, um, see where it's at. And as I'm like kind of coming up to the like front of the house, I like don't see it now. Here's where, oh, this is pretty fucking embarrassing. Here's the security camera footage of me walking up to the door to look to see if this grasshopper is still there. I mean, remember this. It's a fucking, look, I know that it's bullshit that I'm afraid of these things. It's a fucking grasshopper. This thing is, I mean, and I say it's huge. It was about that big. It's still pretty goddamn big, but like. It's not like it was a goddamn bear or a god or a lion. Like I would I swear to God, and I've said this multiple times, I would have been in that situation, I would have been less afraid if there was a goddamn Kodiak bear sitting on our porch as opposed to that grasshopper. I would have been less afraid of that. Or a, a lion. There could have been a fully grown ghost in the darkness, fucking killer man eating lion on our porch, and I would have been less afraid than seeing that fucking grasshopper. So, you know, call bullshit all you want. Go fuck yourself. I know what I'm afraid of. So here, and then, then you want proof? Here we go. What? Just watch this shit. Look at me. Look at that fat pussy. Look at him. <laughs> Look at me. See? He was right above where the little camera is. And I'm <laughs> Look, I'm like fucking Winnie the Pooh. Like about to ask for some honey. God damn it. Do you have a smack on of honey? Like, like, look at that shit. Okay, so. God damn, that's embarrassing. My face is getting hot. Um. But, you know, for the laugh. Um, oh, yeah. Um, also, the grasshopper wasn't there anymore. So, and probably hadn't been there for like 30 minutes. <laughs> I, I'm now, whenever I think back, on, I think I might have scared it away with my second sock throw. Um, yeah, I just didn't know for sure. And that's not something you fuck around with. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I, uh, I'm very embarrassed right now, but you know, yeah, you really, damn, I didn't realize I was that fat too. It's really, uh, you want to, you want to figure out like really what you look like, get a, get scared. Cause you know, I'm sucking in like 90% of the time I'm trying to like kind of hide a little bit of, you know, like you know, like doing that kind of shit. Um, yeah, but when you're afraid of something, when you're like scared, you're not doing that kind of shit. You're fucking like, I was letting that shit sag down. Oh God. Yeah. I got to lose some fucking weight. I mean, look, it's just, I don't know where these fucking, where, like what happened to me as a kid, maybe like a, you know, like a neighbor shoved a grasshopper up my ass or something when I was a kid. Who knows? Um, all I know is that that shit scared the fuck out of me. And 
those well, fuck them god damn oh uh, you're welcome for yeah let me show you that shit and, and there's so much shit that i should have been afraid of like as a kid like as a kid fucking our goddamn like the street i lived on lived on as a kid the entire na- over half of our neighbors were operating fully functioning meth labs <laughs> like on our street and it was at the end of that street so like all day every day you would just sit outside and watch fucking methed out zombies just walking up and down your street like and then going in to like get some fucking meth and then they would come right out and walk but a little bit faster but still kind of zombie walking and you know dropping needles everywhere and shit and you know like like it, you stare like I would sit, sit outside and it's like fucking like 28 days later like World War Z shit like these fucking just methed out I mean probably 20 year olds but they look like they're 70 and they're just like <sighs> like walking down the street to get meth and I ended up with a fear of grasshoppers so I don't know what the fuck that comes from yeah also NFL season has started um, if anybody hasn't watched Hard Knocks on HBO, I highly recommend watching it this year. They had the Dallas Cowboys, which being from Texas, um, I fucking hate the Dallas Cowboys with a passion. So I was like, I'm going to watch this shit just to see like how much of a train wreck these fucking idiots are. God damn. Look, I'll say one thing. Um, Ezekiel Elliott and Dak Prescott have a weird friendship. And friendship, I'm using kind of fucking... I don't know what how to say it. Like, I'm... I, okay, they're gay. They're 100% fucking gay for each other. Um, I think Dak, maybe less so. Ezekiel Elliott... Okay, so there's a part... There's a fucking episode... Where, and nobody, and everybody else said this, he's like, what the fuck? No, they're not. They're fucking football players. Oh, yeah, because there are no gay football players. I mean, just because there's only like one or two that have been open, bullshit. Um, so there's an episode where, because I guess Ezekiel Elliott and Dak Prescott have birthdays that are like a week apart. And they always buy something for each other for the birthday. Ezekiel Elliott is like wrapping this present for him and it's just really fucking like how he talks and how he's like he's like i don't know i don't know I, how fucking old is it hold on a second how old is ezekiel elliott because there is a thing with like kind of this like what do you call it? gen z is that gen z's the is gen z the uh okay so he's 26 no oh, shit, he's only a year younger than me. But I don't know. There's something about like, I guess that makes him more millennial because I think I am too. But it's just like a weird thing of people being like, kind of, I don't know, just like a little fruity. Oh, you're probably not supposed to say fruity any. Oh well. I mean, there's just yeah. There's there's something about it where I was like, okay. So he's he's wrapping this present and it's all it's very strange. Like just how he's wrapping the present, how fucking happy he gets when he's talking about Dak Prescott. Like really fucking happy. Um and then so he's wrapping this shit and they're asking him, like, oh, you know, like, um Oh, so you're gonna this present, like you're gonna really be friends with him. <laughs> he's like Oh yeah, I I love Dak. Like he was just saying all the shit, and it's like, okay, fucking John Hinckley, and um, he. So I was just kind of like, okay, this is a bit weird. I think they might be gay, but this is just it's it's just or maybe it's just a really close friendship. Um, I mean, I've never wrapped a present for one of my friends, 
So, hmm. uh, he then they're like, oh, well, what did uh, he get you for your birthday? And he says, a diamond bracelet. And I was like, oh, there it is. That's the fucking. <laughs> there it is. The goddamn uh, magic bullet. Fucking what do you call it? Red herring. Rosebud. Yeah, that was it. I was like, oh, fuck. Like they're buying. He bought him fucking jewelry and not like a necklace you know with like a big number 21 on it or something like a fucking also i mean calling it a bracelet that's fucking weird i look i don't know maybe like in my head i'm maybe i'm just not progressive enough but i would never buy one of my like guy friends a fucking diamond bracelet a diamond anything or a bracelet anything let alone a diamond bracelet and then, like, I wouldn't be that happy wrapping a present for fucking anybody. I mean, I just put that shit in a fucking little, like, Christmas bag. And say, here, I look, you just should watch it. And you'd see exactly what I'm talking about. He also, there's a lot of videos of him. Like, when Dak is walking by, you know, they give each other, like, a little pat on the ass. Which I always thought was kind of strange. But, it's not, I mean, it's not really that big of a deal. But, you know, normally it's just like a little no look, just like, yep, good game, good game. When Ezekiel Elliott does it, he is watching the ass from like a good 10 feet and waiting for it to come up to him. And then he turns and looks down at it and goes and smacks it and then is looking at it as it walks away. So there's about a 30 foot total distance of hip ass watching. Including the smack. And the smack isn't just like a little good game, good game. Like he's like, <clears throat> like, yeah. like he's, he's liking it. And then he's watching it as it goes away to watch like the, the fall, you know, the lit, cause you know, and, and normally the smack isn't a lift. It's, it's, it's almost like a, like a little, like a, like a clap, but you're just going like, so here's ass cheek, here's hand like that. His, so bottom of ass cheek. His is kind of going, and whenever he does it, he's like, but he's lifting slow like that. He's going, and he's making like little sounds, he's going, mm, and then lifting it. And then whenever it lifts, as they walk away, he's looking back, like watching it kind of fall because it's, mm, and he's like looking at it like, yeah, bitch. <laughs> and look, I don't know. Maybe he's gay, maybe he's not. But the fucker's weird. Like, super fucking weird. Uh, and there ain't no denying that. So, with NFL season kicking off, fuck the Cowboys. Raiders all the way. Well, that'll conclude this episode. I'm going to go watch Hard Knocks and uh, crank one out. Goodbye. <laughs>